Hello. This video, I'm going to show how to attach a new power cord to an old clock. I have three different methods of doing this. One involves soldering the wire directly to the motor. Another one is to attach the wire using wire nuts. And the third technique involves the use of what's called heat shrink tubing. I plan to demonstrate all three. This clock is an old Hammond. And the reason I can use the wire nuts on it is because it's an open case. There's a lot of room in here to tuck the wires into it and they'll be out of the way. And most of these clocks you'll find the existing wires coming out of the coil. And hopefully you don't have to disturb them and they are intact. On the other end, very often you'll find the existing power cord to be old and frayed and you have to cut that off, strip away some of the insulation from the wires here. And then once you have your new power cord, also strip away a bit of the insulation from either end here. And then you have to twist this around each wire and I'll show you how. You want to twist the wires together in a clockwise direction. That way the wire nuts will screw on and stay on very snug. There are actually threaded springs in here and they act like a screw. And I'll show you how we do that. Once they're on, check to make sure they're nice and tight. They don't pull off easily. There's no need to secure it with electrical tape. A lot of people will do that, but the tape ends up drying up, getting brittle, and comes apart as the years go by. The last step is just to slip the wire holder through the back plate. Position it, screw it back in, and you've completed replacing a power cord in what I like to refer to as an open clock case. I'm going to show you the next way to do one on what's a closed case. What I want to show next is how to replace the power cord on a clock that fits into a closed case. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is a closed case. The clock mechanism that fits in here fills up the whole space. There's no excess room in it to tuck in any wires the way there was uh, in the first one here. This is a Hammond. This is the type of mechanism that fits in here. And once it's in, there's no room for anything. And what has to happen is the wire comes out from the coil just through this little opening here. Uh, because of that, it's a whole different technique to attach the wire. Uh, a lot of different tools are needed. I'm gonna show you what I need to do that and, uh, and how we do it. What you will need for this is a soldering gun or iron along with some solder also what's known as heat shrink tubing and then to shrink that down you need a hot air gun this is a mini one uh, they work better some people try to use a hair dryer to shrink this tubing down it doesn't get quite as hot it takes a lot longer this works rather well and i'll show you the next step involved there are several steps to this technique and i'm going to explain it all and then uh, show it what will be coming out of here is going to be wires from a coil similar to this and you'll probably just have you're going to see the couple of wires coming out the back like this in order to attach the new power cord the first thing is you have to tin these exposed tips which means you coat it with a little bit of solder uh, prior to doing that you have to slip your shrink wrap tubing over it. Once this is soldered together, this slides up between where the wires are connected and then the hot air gun will shrink this to a tight fit around the wire, securing everything and making a very nice, safe, tight fit. And let me get set up and I'll show you how to do that. Although you would have to do this to both wires, I'm just gonna demonstrate it on one of them.
there you have it. Attaching a new power cord. Just to review the steps that I just uh, showed with the solder, I tinned the tips of the wire, which just coats it with a little bit of solder. Then touch them together with the gun. Uh, it, they, they stick together. The key is not to forget to place your shrink wreck tubing over the wire before you do all that. Slide it back up, hit it with the hot air gun, and you're good to go. I'm going to explain the third technique for adding a new power cord. Sometimes when you have the coil, instead of the wire coming directly out of it, there'll be little metal tabs and the wire is soldered directly to it. And I have an example of what that looks like. Here's your coil and his little metal tabs. And what I did on this clock was I was able to remove the solder and the old piece of wire that came with it and just attach a whole new power cord, just soldering it directly to these two contacts. Uh, it's actually a lot easier than everything else I've done so far. And that pretty much wraps it up. I hope this video will help you in knowing how to replace a power cord. It's not that difficult. And uh, I wish you the best of luck with it. Bye for now.